What's going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video and today we are going to be taking a look at the second installment in our two-part breakdown of the Seven Deadly Sins collaboration update. But before we do, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. So we're going to go ahead and jump straight into it. Today we are going to take a look at the Super Mission, the Should You Summon for the Character Banner for Volume 1, and then finally we are going to take a look at the in-game shop items to see if any of those things are going to be worth your hard-earned dolphin or whale money. So let's go ahead and start out with the super mission. Now I saved this because we are going to be talking about Elizabeth today as well as the rest of the characters on the volume one banner. So to be thematic, I figured I'd go ahead and put this here. But when it comes to the super mission, it's going to be your standard fare. You're going to be able to pick up this free version of Elizabeth for doing the first day missions. And then finally, on the last day, you will unlock for the final reward, not just the hammers for the imprint stone that you will get from your imprint stone selection box on the sixth day, but you will also be able to pick up this memory for Elizabeth as well. Whether or not she is worth it, it doesn't really matter because she's free, so uh, worth regardless. But we are going to talk about whether or not she is going to do anything for your account going forward in the future momentarily when we talk about the characters. But as far as the setup of the super mission, it's cool, but I really would have liked to have seen her card. And that is something that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, to be honest with you guys. I'm kind of curious as to why they decided that they weren't going to put the card on here. I'm assuming that considering the fact that this Elizabeth and the other Elizabeth, which is going to be the gotcha version that will be on the second run banner, I get the feeling that they kept it off because they share that card and they want you to have to spend rubies, but hey. I don't have any background information from Netmarble. I'm just uh, jumping to conclusions. So yeah, but anyway, that's going to be your super mission. It's pretty basic, but pretty nice overall. I just really am kind of flabbergasted that they decided not to put the card on here because that's generally the case. But hey, I digress. So let's go ahead and talk about these characters then. So inevitably, the first question that I'm going to be asked about this, and this is of course what everybody has been asking me about for the past couple of days, is whether or not I feel like these characters are worth summoning, whether or not I think these characters are good, so on and so forth. And I had been holding off my opinions as long and as humanly as possible because I wanted to get all the information in front of me as far as proper translations and to see if Netmarble wasn't going to pull any shenanigans upon release as far as these kits go. I didn't want to make any knee-jerk reactions to anything. So basically with these characters, in a nutshell, right off the bat, just to be frank with you guys, these are PvP characters. And it is pretty obvious not only from their kits, but just in general the way they perform, that these characters were designed with championship in mind. So if you are somebody that finds championship to be something you greatly enjoy, or you definitely worry about how high up the ladder you can climb each season, you're probably going to need these characters in general because these characters are going to be meta-shifting characters in PvP. The thing is, though, it is going to be a situation for PvE players that, as much as it's going to pain them, they can skip this and I'm going to go through all of this and kind of tell you why but let's go ahead and take a look here at the rates first and foremost so these are going to be your rates you're going to have a 2.4 percent chance to pull a best five star from the lineup of seven deadly sins characters on a 0.6 percent chance up for each one of them as far as the pity rate goes it is standard it is going to be 18k rubies total or 20 multis in order to go to pity on this banner so definitely always nice that it isn't 30 like it is with the unified banner now we're going to take a look at the elizabeth that is also the free to play elizabeth that we just spoke about during the super mission first but when it comes to this elizabeth this elizabeth is actually quite good for a free to play character now no there is no rachel in this collaboration rachel was kind of an anomaly i feel like she's going to be an outlier and definitely not have someone kind of surmount her as the best free-to-play, best collaboration character going forward for a very long time. 
but when it comes to this Elizabeth, she's really good. So when it comes to this Elizabeth here, she is going to be a green defense. She's going to have a leadership skill that decreases all fighters attack by 30% and active skill damage by 20%. And the reason why I say she's going to be really good is because she has value in reviving Hell's Dungeon as a green defensive type. She has really good ability to vacuum up mobs with her abilities on her skills with her animations. So for a new player or somebody who is on a budget or even if you're a veteran who is still looking to finish out Reviving Hell's Dungeon and you want to round out your team with a green defensive fighter for that tier in order to clear it, she is going to be a better option for you than a lot of these gold border green defensive types that a lot of times we've just settled for. So looking at her cores, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to point out the ones that are the most important because her cores aren't necessarily the strongest. You don't typically see really, really strong cores on these free-to-play characters, but with her power gain at 15%, that's always nice, so having that power charge rate increased is always going to be beneficial. She is also going to have on her exclusive cores decreases damage received by 50% for 4 seconds when receiving a crit on a cooldown of 13 seconds, so she's definitely going to have a little bit of damage mitigation there, which is nice. And then on her final core, she is going to gain super armor for 2 seconds and 30% power when her HP is 40% or less on a cooldown of 30 seconds. So basically she has kind of a mini save built in here. It's not going to be as good of a save as some other characters that you would see out there, but it is something that will benefit her. Now what you're going to notice about this is really this entire core kit is not going to come into play in PvE very much. So at the end of the day, it's going to be a situation where, you know, she is really just going to be there to round out a team. I feel like her skills, though, actually do make up for these quite a bit and kind of pull the weight. But still, she is going to be kind of your middle of the road to average to a above average if you are somebody that just is really tight on characters type of free to play unit that is going to be very niche for specific uses but she is also going to have the seven deadly sins exclusive core which i am going to only read this once because they all have it and it's a lot of words but the seven deadly sins increases attack by 10 percent and decreases damage received by 10 percent when hp is 50 percent or more with a 10 percent chance to instantly gain power at 10 percent upon landing a hit on a cooldown of 12 seconds. So that is going to be the exclusive core for all the Seven Deadly Sins characters. Overall, a pretty decent and solid overall core, but that's going to be Elizabeth's cores in a nutshell. Now, as far as her skills go, on her S1, she's going to have a 70% chance to ignore the target's guard upon landing a successful attack. Yet again, there you go, another PvP skill. You're going to see a theme this entire video. Gain super armor for 3 seconds when using a skill. Increases attack by 43% of defense for 8 seconds when using a skill on her S2. So she's going to have some defense to attack conversion, which is always nice. Being that she is a defensive based character, it makes sense. Under S3, she decreases damage received by 70% for 3 seconds, more damage mitigation, and increases her power charge rate by 50% for 7 seconds, and decreases the enemy's power charge rate by 50% upon landing a skill. So another skill that is going to be heavily PvP based, but definitely comes into play and has benefits as well in PvE. So overall with her, the reason why I think that she is kind of a middle to above average PvE character, really good mobbing skills, they vacuum things up really well. Um, they actually have some really nice XY axis and range on them. And overall, being a green defensive type, she's just going to be very strong for things like Reviving Hell's Dungeon to round out teams. She's not gonna be your team carry, but as a third just to get through, it's definitely going to be a consideration to be made here for her. So definitely for a free-to-play character, pretty strong, but again, nowhere near as strong as what you were used to with Rachel in Seven Nights or anything like that. And again, that isn't something I feel would be kind of fair to compare her to, to be honest. So let's go ahead and move on to the actual Gotcha Fest now. And the first character we're going to talk about is Bon. So with Bon here, we uh, have a character that is definitely going to be 100% geared towards one game mode, which is pretty obvious. Now, I guess I shouldn't say just one mode, but really I don't count League and Infinite Battle because 
honestly, those two modes are pretty easy. So let's go ahead and talk about Bon though, because he is going to make some waves in PvP Championship. So Bon is a purple attack type. He is going to have a leadership skill that is going to increase attack type fighters attack by 45% and their crit rate by 5% meaning you're never going to use that leadership skill. As far as his typing goes, that typing is actually fairly nice. Um, it actually would be beneficial for the higher tiers of RHD as well, so I don't necessarily recommend building him up that high, because at that point you would need to build him up to Awakening level 4 or 5 in order to get that kind of use out of him, and I really don't think that would be worth it with him, but hey. If that's what you gotta work with what you got. So if that's what you got, go with, go for it. But just know I told you not to. Now when it comes to his cores, he is going to have a 15% power charge rate increase. He is then going to have on his exclusive cores a becomes immune to damage and resets active school cooldowns for six seconds when HP is 30% or less on a cooldown of 45 seconds. So he is going to have a save. And this is going to get him out of trouble in a lot of ways. Basically, he's going to become immune to damage and reset all of his actives so he's basically going to get damage immunity and he is going to get a Leah set kind of esque effect on his kit for six seconds when his HP is at 30% or less this is bugged and this don't work right now meaning in championship right this minute not very good now the problem is is that right now this is only triggering when he is at the death threshold when he's at 1% HP Apparently this had changed, this originally from the original translations, if I remember correctly, was at a 1% for the save and I think they boosted it up to his 30% threshold and something's going on in the background and it ain't working. So it could be that it has everything to do with that or it could be that when they went to kind of tinker with that they messed something up because he's not the only character suffering from this kind of stuff. But whenever this gets to the point where it is working correctly, he is actually going to be much more viable. He's still pretty good as it is, but he's definitely going to be lesser than the next two characters we're going to talk about in Championship. Now, when it comes to his final core, he has a PvP exclusive, and it is going to be increases attack by 35% for 5 seconds and removes the target's attack increase effects upon landing an active skill. And then he, of course, has the 7 Deadly Sins exclusive core. So, with this, he is going to be able to remove buffs and that is very very nice overall it is a very pvp centric skill it is basically going to be nothing but pvp focus there being that it's a pvp exclusive so yeah bon is definitely designed with pvp in mind it's just very unfortunate that he's bugged right now but they're aware of it they'll get it fixed Next up on his skills, on his S1, he's going to increase target's damage received by 20% for 7 seconds upon landing a skill, with a 100% chance to ignore the target's guard. So he has a 100% guard break on his S1, and that is going to make him a nuisance in PvP, because guard break is of the utmost importance there. Generally, the threshold that you look for for these characters is going to be around 70% or so for their guard break chance. Being that he's at 100, yeah, he good. Yeah, he real good. So, next up on his S2, he's going to gain super armor for 3 seconds when using a skill. And he's going to decrease his damage received by 85% for 3 seconds. And this is an interrupt. Another extremely good PvP skill. You like to have an interrupt on your kit when you're a PvP character. You decreasing the damage received by 85% is Almost! They should have just given him the hyper armor. It's so close to being the damage immunity. But being that he already had it kind of on his save, I guess they didn't want to give him any more sources of damage immunity, which I guess I get. But still, it would have been nice to see. But that is a lot of damage midi on a kit. And then finally, on to his S3. He is going to have a 70% chance to reset the, his cooldowns upon a successful attack. And then he's going to also inflict 30% of his attack as bleed damage to the target every one second for seven seconds upon landing a skill. Very strong skill overall. Having a 70% chance to reset his cooldowns every 15 seconds is really good. So overall, Bon is in a good place. I feel like he's a character that is going to get kind of neglected by a lot of people just that aren't necessarily into the Seven Deadly Sins thing, although I know that he is kind of a fan favorite amongst that community. So 
you know, he's going to be a character I feel like some people might sleep on. And again, remember, he is bugged right now, so you can't take into consideration how he's performing currently as kind of a benchmark to put him at because of that, because his biggest gimmick is bugged at the moment. This save, very important to him. So overall, very strong PvP character. I feel like he is going to definitely see a lot of play. I've talked to a lot of my PvP friends, a lot of my championship friends, and they are all very impressed with these three characters on this banner. So that is going to be Bon. Next up, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite. We're going to talk about, not you, Bon, go away, Merlin. So there is a fair bit of controversy going on with Merlin in general leading up to her release. A lot of people had noticed that they had kind of nerfed certain aspects of her physique, if we could say that that way. I'm going to go with that. But they also nerfed her skills, and we're going to get to that, but instead of her having hyper armor like she did in the Korean live stream and like the translations had reflected, she now has super armor. And this was probably a balancing choice. I do not hold this against Netmarble because they were careful to tell us that these were test builds and they could change anything at any time before release, considering that they were still actively working on all of them. So it is what it is. She's still in a really, really good spot. So we're going to talk about why here. But as far as her typing goes, she is a blue balance, which means absolutely nothing because blue balance means nothing. Next up on her leadership skill, she is going to have a better leadership skill than the rest of the characters we've talked about so far with a increase to 7 Deadly Sins fighters attack by 45% and their power charge rate by 20%. Very very good on a character that you're probably never going to use in a leadership role in PvE, but hey, she's got it, so good for her. Next up, we're going to move on to her cores. So looking at her cores here, she is actually going to have a 20% power charge rate increase as opposed to a 15, which is definitely a step up from that that we have seen with these other characters. On her exclusive cores, however, that's where things start to open up for her. So for four seconds after landing a critical hit on a chilled target, she is then going to freeze the target for two seconds on a cooldown of 15 seconds. This is very reminiscent and very similar to the stun that Lady Big has, and we all know how good Lady Big is in PvP, or at least was for a good long time. And so this really is a boon for her kit in Championship, but it doesn't stop there. It also is going to deal additional damage equal to 170% of attack to all enemies upon attacking a frozen target. So basically what you're looking at here is a kind of PvE core also, because this is actually going to do burst damage at 170% of attack clip to all enemies when you attack a frozen target. So that is going to be nice for her kind of crowd dealings and her mobbing, but it isn't anything that is necessarily going to shift her into a PvE role in my opinion. She's still, she's probably going to, she's definitely going to be better in PvE than a character like Bon would be who is very, very PvP centric, but she's still not designed with that in mind. Now, finally, on her final core, she's going to deal additional burn, chill, or darkness damage equal to 40% of her attack to a target upon landing a basic skill. So this is another really nice PvP skill. However, it does have a lot of drawbacks, and of course it does also have the 7 Deadly Sins exclusive on there as well, like they all do. But being that she can't necessarily control which of the dot damages she's doing. You can't use this really very reliably at all in PvE, and you really shouldn't. So again, PvP kind of oriented skills here, but definitely going to be something to where that's going to help her overall damage output, and her damage output in general is actually quite nice. So that is going to be her cores. Again, nothing that is going to surprise anyone. Getting into her skills though, that's where things get a lot better for her. So she's going to have a 70% chance to ignore the target's guard upon landing a successful attack. So we already talked about how 70% is kind of the baseline you look for for guard break, so that's really nice. Then she's also going to have a PvP exclusive on that skill, where the target cannot activate their buffs from active skills for 3 seconds upon landing a skill. So basically, instead of removing buffs, she's just not going to allow you to have them. That's really, really strong in PvP. Again, these characters are going to be meta in Championship. 
Now next up on her S2, she gains super armor for 3 seconds when using a skill. She also is going to apply cold spell for 6 seconds to a target upon a successful attack. For those of you who did not watch my dot guide, cold spell is going to deal chill damage equal to 30% of attack every 1 second and decrease attack speed and movement speed by 10% respectively. So cold spell, always nice to have, she has some super armor, that is what got nerfed, she no longer has hyper armor as you can tell, but it really has not held her back a whole heck of a lot, she is still leaving a pretty big impression upon the championship player base. So time will tell if she can hang on to that and where she can rank herself on a tier list, but I think that she is going to do very well for herself. Then finally on her S3, she is going to decrease damage received by 70% for 4 seconds, and then deals one of the following damages equal to 27% of her attack upon landing a skill every 1 second for 7 seconds. Burn, Bleed, Poison, Chill, or Shock. So finally, on her last skill, she is going back to the gimmick of having kind of random dots that she can apply. So overall, very nice, very strong PvP character. This is a character that is going to be used. This is a character that a lot of people are already having a lot of fun with, but her finisher is super bugged, and it is the most hilarious thing in the world. So moving on now to the final character, the big boy himself, the one that everybody's talking about, Meliodas. So I don't think it's any secret that Meliodas is the most sought after of all of these characters overall. And really it comes down to him having just the most impressive lineup when it comes to both his cores and his skills. So let's talk about kind of what he's got going on under the hood. So first things first, he is going to be a yellow defense. So very good already right off the bat. He is also going to have a leadership skill that increases seven deadly sins fighters attack by 55% also really good and something that mm, you may or may not use in pve ever but at least he has it um but yeah overall both of those are very solid so it's a good start for him getting into his cores he is going to have the best lineup of cores of all these characters so far so first things first a 30 percent power charge rate increase that's about double what most of these characters are and 10 percent more than merlin so he's definitely going to have the best power charge of all these characters as far as his cores go. And then when you get into his exclusive cores, that's where things get really cool and really interesting. So the Dragon Sin of Wrath, which is his first exclusive core here. I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to tell you who it's reminiscent of. So it increases penetration by 300 for 5 seconds upon each attack, stacks up to 5, and he becomes immune to stun. Who does that remind you of? I'll wait. All right, that is very similar to Lady Zero. Lady Zero actually has the almost exact same penetration ramp that he has, only hers is just a little bit better at 400. So basically, he's going to be able to stack that penetration up to five times at a 300 clip, and that's really, really nice. That is going to make his damage output insane whenever he gets those stacks up. So very nice that he has that. Being immune to stun is very key when it comes to PvP as well, so that's also really good. So that is going to be his first exclusive core. And then we get into his second one, and it is a mouthful. So let's go ahead and get into it. He is going to increase active skill damage dealt to an enemy in darkness by 35%. So he is going to have darkness on his kit, which is also really, really good. He is not going to be as good as a Delens as far as PvE is concerned, so do not think that you are going to be able to kind of replace the fact that you might have missed out on Delens with him. He is not going to be that, but still, it's nice that he has it because it is a rare dot. Then next up, his PvP exclusive on this core is going to be a 20% chance to reflect 15% of damage received upon receiving a blast active skill on a cooldown of 15 seconds. Very niche. There are a ton of blast active skills out there that people use, so it's going to have its uses in PvP, but at the same time, you would have liked to have seen it maybe just be a flat 15% in general on maybe a 10% chance or something like that, and that way it would have opened it up a little bit more, but still, it is going to be useful. And then, of course, he has the 7 Deadly Sins core like the rest of them. Now, getting into his skills, let's talk about his S1 first. He is going to increase his attack by 29% for 7 seconds. He's going to stun an enemy for 2 seconds upon a successful attack, with a 50% chance to ignore the target's guard upon landing attacks. 
So basically he is going to have a 50% chance to ignore guard. You kind of wish it was a little bit higher, but 50% 50, 50 is still really nice. And then he is going to also have a stun and an increase to his attack on there. So overall a really, really solid skill. Very, very good. He also has very short uh, cooldowns on these two if you had not checked those out. So next up on his S2, he is going to apply Blackout for 6 seconds to the target upon landing a skill, which means he's going to deal Darkness damage equal to 30% of his attack every 1 second and decrease their power by 2%. Now he's also going to have a PvP exclusive here with a 40% chance to remove the target's super or hyper armor upon landing a skill on the target. So this is really nice. 40% chance, a little low, but it's still really nice. Anytime you have a character that can remove super or hyper armor, it is really beneficial in PvP Championship. This skill is really good. So overall, very solid so far. And then you finally get to his S3, which is pretty basic compared to the other two. He's going to get hyper armor for three seconds. So there you go. Now it doesn't stop there though, because he does have darkness damage on his finisher. So it's going to be on his core finisher, so it's going to be on the non-card finisher that he has. So overall, very solid. This character is going to be a beast in PvP. Very, very strong. Uh, overall, him and Merlin, extremely good in PvP. I would say Bon is probably going to give Merlin kind of maybe a run for her money. Maybe. I I don't know. Merlin's pretty good for PvP, but he's going to need himself to get fixed over there on the Netmarble side of things before he's going to be able to say he can do that. So that is going to be this banner. So overall, what do we think, guys? I think that if you are someone that plays a lot of championship, I think if you're someone who takes PvP seriously, I think if you're somebody who just downloaded the game and wants a good way to get a decent set of characters overall to get started in PvP because you have kind of machinations for playing that mode and want to be good, um, yeah, these characters are going to be for you. These characters are going to be very, very solid for you. If you are a player such as myself who doesn't play a lot of PvP and doesn't get a lot of value out of PvP characters and you're mainly going to be someone who plays a lot of PvE, which eventually will change here very soon. Uh, stay tuned, there's stuff coming. But, you know, that at that point, I would say you can skip if you're a PvE guy. You know, PvE-wise, these characters aren't really going to be tipping any needles. Even if you are kind of working with a thin roster overall, and some of these characters are going to fulfill needs that you might have that you might not, you know, say you don't have Delons or so on and so forth, and you kind of want to go with for Meliodas or whatever the case, you know, then that's good for you. You could probably do that, but... You know, in this day and age of getting all these limited run banners and so on and so forth, I feel like this is something you have to be careful of because there's four fast characters on this banner and while yes, these rates are not bad at all, being that it is so diluted, the fact of the matter is you might have to go to pity for that Meliodas. So it's one of those things where is it really worth it to you? And only you can decide that. But I'm telling you right now, if you are a championship or PVP player, you want these characters, they are going to be extremely powerful for you. And that's my story. So, those are going to be the characters, guys. We're going to move on to the in-game shop items. We're going to talk about those and break those down next. And then we can pretty much bid this collaboration update adieu for now. So, let's go ahead and talk about these packages. And we're going to break it down the same way we always do. We're going to talk about the dolphin packages, and then we're going to talk about the whale packages. And we're going to see if they are worth your money. So, first things first, we're going to go here and we're going to talk about the seven deadly sins packages. So, first and foremost, we talked about these two types of packages quite a bit in the past. These are the two dolphin packages here. I guess you could maybe call this one a minnow package. I don't know what the imaginary cutoffs are financially for this stuff for people to consider themselves a minnow, a dolphin, or a whale. I've never understood how that all works, but so maybe somebody in the comment section can give me like, maybe you can give me like a graph, you know, just telling me, hey, you have to spend this amount of money, or if you do spend this amount of money, you'll be a whale, or whatever the case may be. Let me know. But when it comes to this package, this is going to be your $10 package. It is going to give you one multi for the characters, one multi for the cards for the Seven Deadly Sins characters. You can buy it up to three times. It's nice and cheap. It's about $5 a multi. Not too bad. Not too shabby. 
I would say it'd be worth it if you're wanting to spend a little bit of money. Say you're a Seven Deadly Sins fan and you just downloaded the game and you want to get into the game and you really like it. You want to build up your roster. You're planning on playing it for a while. Sure, why not? But at the same time, if you're already going to spend 10 bucks, why not just go the whole way and spend 25 and get this, right? So this here is actually much more value. You actually get two character tokens, two card tokens, 800 rubies, and 100 auto clear tickets. Good stuff. This is pretty nice. Anytime these come around, I always recommend these. If you are somebody who wants the content that's in there, then go for these because these are really good value. Um, overall, I mean, you're basically getting a, almost another multi's worth of rubies, so you can't complain. 100 skip tickets is always nice, especially when we have world drop events and things like that. You're going to go through them quite often. So overall, you can buy this up to twice per account. So hey, if you got a little bit of money you're wanting to spend and you're wanting to jump into the game and get a jump start, this might be a good package for you. Now, next up is the whale package, and the whales don't need me to tell them to spend money. They're going to whale. They don't care. So, I don't even have to tell you guys. This is a great deal. Buy it. I mean, shoot, if you're a whale, why not? This is great. Because you get eight tokens for both banners. You get a Elemental Fest Memory Mystery Box, and you get some gold. Those last two things, you don't even care about, do you? You're just here for the tokens. Dirty tokens. But yeah, this is a really good deal. These are always a really good deal whenever they drop because that's a lot of multis for the money. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but whales don't care. For them, that's like five bucks. They don't care. But yeah, very, very good package. These are always going to be valuable if you can afford them. Don't go out of your way to spend money if you don't got it, though. But finally, speaking of things you shouldn't spend money on, don't buy this. I'm not even going to talk about it. It's worthless. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much going to be this update in a nutshell. If you missed yesterday's video and missed all the other details on this collaboration update that I went over, make sure you check it out. The link will be in the description. But I hope you guys have good luck with your summons if you're summoning for these characters. I hope that this was informative. For those of you who are wondering, we are still waiting to hear and we're still testing thoroughly the different stones for these characters. So hold off on putting stones on your characters before then because eventually we will have that information with detailed numbers and breakdowns for all the nerdy stuff. But for now, we're still not sure exactly what we're looking at entirely there. But common sense looks like it might prevail as far as that topic is concerned but for those of you who are summoning like i said good luck let me know in the comments section how you feel about these characters if there's certain characters here that you are super invested in or super interested in i know that this ip has a ton of fans if you are new to the game welcome make sure you smash that like button and subscribe i do daily content like this every single day well maybe not like this we don't get new characters and new collaborations every day but I do do King of Fighters All-Star videos every day. Anyway, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. You all enjoy your days. Peace. Continue.